Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Above the Light, the debut studio record by the Italian progressive death metal band Sadist. Today we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of the record, so decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple, I've stumbled upon their music back in the year 2011, I found their record Tribe on YouTube and it made a big impression on me because it sounded so strange and magical. It reminds me a mix of death metal music and Unreal soundtrack. Tribe came out in 1996 and Unreal in 1998 was the creator of that game's soundtrack inspired by Tribe? Probably not, but both of those releases share a similar atmosphere, which I feel is very memorable and also nostalgic at the same time. Going back to Above the Light, we only have three people here Andy on the bass and the vocals, Tammy on guitars, samplers, effects, synths, piano, and Peso on the drums. Those three guys created this record and it's a massive achievement, I think. The production is tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness war, no clipping, those were the good old days. I truly enjoy the clarity on this release, how you can easily hear the bass, the guitars, just every instrument, it all works. Then in the year 2006 there was a remaster and I think it's not as good as the original recording. It's almost the same thing, but the clarity got lost. I still enjoy it because it has more power in the guitars, but I still listen to the original way more. Message on this record is diverse. We've got songs about various topics ranging from society, personal struggles, relationship issues, to even mental problems. Structure of the songs is mostly technical, which means each song has from 8 to 12 segments. Some of them do repeat, while others do not. Music on the album can be described as progressive death metal, and some of the guitar riffs remind me of old school thrash metal. The album starts with the song Nadir. This track has no vocals and it basically exists to ease you in into the keyboard and synth elements you're going to hear in every song. And I must say that I truly enjoyed this intro. As you may know from my other reviews, I am not the biggest fan of interludes on the albums, I think they are just worthless, but here it actually works and I truly enjoy it. It's a beautiful piece of music. 8 out of 10. Breathing Cancer is the first song when we are going to hear all of the instruments. First, let's start with the drums. The drummer, Peso, or Peso, is killing it on this entire record. His drumming is precise, he's fast, he's clean, he can groove, he can blast beat, his double bass work is amazing, he can do it all. Next is the bass, Andy is killing it on the bass. The bass work in this band is one of my all-time favorite things, because you can always clearly hear the bass, the bassist is always doing his own thing, and sometimes he even plays the solos, which is very nice. Not on this record, but on the next ones. Still, here, Andy is killing it on the bass. Then we have the guitar work by Tommy, and again, phenomenal playing. He has his own guitar style, you can always recognize that it's him. I especially enjoy that he uses some weird effects on the guitar sometimes. It kinda reminds me of Nu Metal, like that effect is on the last song, Happiness and Sorrow, that wow wow, it's like a wah mixed with some natural harmonics or some shit. It sounds very weird but beautiful to me. Every guitar riff he creates is magical and it's like a mix of that very atmospheric stuff and heavier death metalish and thrash metalish stuff basically. And finally we have the vocals also by Andy, the bassist. And I must say that I truly enjoy his vocals. He's mostly screaming and half growling here. Let me also mention all of the effects, keyboards and synths that Tammy is doing here. They truly enrich the overall sound of this album. This song, Breathing Cancer, is a classic. It has a cool intro, then we get that very heavy, thrashy guitar riff, and I actually love almost 
every segment in this song some of them the more heavier ones were like okay but i do love the cleaner and more mellow parts you know the guitar solos here are phenomenal the atmosphere is top notch i do enjoy the lyrics while this band is from italy and english is not their first language so sometimes the lyrics seem weird or like they don't know what they're saying but the message behind every song is actually quite important especially here we live in a sick society basically breathing cancer is a beautiful song they even re-recorded it this year in january for this anniversary and while the new version has better production better guitar sound better vocals it doesn't have as good keyboard and basically symphonic elements i would say this old school stuff sounds better to my ears <laughs> i just don't know why i'm not a boomer i wasn't even alive when this record was released but this version the original just seems better i truly enjoy this song 9 out of 10 enslaver of lies has great lyrics and i do love the guitar riffs here but some of them are not for me i also dig the more darker atmosphere compared to the previous song i still dig the solos the bass work and the drumming which is just phenomenal even the vocals this is a great song 8 out of 10 sometimes they come back now this one is just beautiful i love the intro because it reminds me of the video game diablo the more mellow parts yet again shine through and they're the most memorable thing about this song but the more heavier thrashier and death metal stuff is also fun yet again some of the segments are not for me but overall this is a banger 9 out of 10 Helen Myself is one of my all-time favorite songs from this band I truly love the intro it's just so melodic and magical sounds nostalgic for some reason then we get some more heavier parts also the first guitar solo made a big impression on me when I first heard it and it still does after all those years the heavier parts you know the tremolo riffs they seem very angry and I do also enjoy them. I must say that there isn't any segment in this song that I wouldn't love. It's a masterpiece from beginning to the end. 10 out of 10, Desert Divinities starts with a cool piano melody, then we get some more heavier stuff and yet again I must say that this song is almost perfect. Most of the segments I love, but some of the heavier ones were like, yeah, it's okay, I am just waiting for it to end so I can get back to more interesting stuff. Still amazing song, 9 out of 10. Sadist is the weakest song on this record, while I do enjoy the drumming, the guitar and the bass work, the keyboard and symphonic elements are just not for me. I don't know why, because every other song on this record has beautiful effects and keyboard elements, but this one just doesn't. What's interesting about this one is the fact that it was also re-recorded in 2007 and I am not sure which version is better. This one is still good, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad song, but compared to everything else on this record, it's just great nothing more. 8 out of 10. And the final song on the standard edition, Happiness and Sorrow, this is my favorite song on this record. I just love the intro guitar riff. It's just so memorable and nostalgic. Then we get more heavier parts, some blast beats, and what makes me very happy, besides the more mellow parts, is the fact that that guitar riff comes back at the end, you know, that doom doom doom, and it's just so beautiful to listen to. This track is legendary to me. 10 out of 10. Now we have two bonus tracks from the remastered edition of the record. And those songs were recorded in the year 2000 with the original vocalist Fabio, who came back for some reason. Before that he only sang on the 1991 EP Black Screams. And what's even more interesting is that both of these songs are not new. They were already present on the 1991 EP. So these are just re-recordings. And the first one is called Dreaming Deformities. I must say that this song is a banger, I love its very dark nature. If this was on the standard edition, it would be the most heaviest and darkest song on the record. I love the, yet again, keyboard effects, but the drumming is on point 
the guitar is just so juicy and evil sounding. The vocals are just fine. Fabio is not the best vocalist to be honest, but he's doing okay, you know. He's not as good as Andy or anyone else who sang for this band, but he does his job. I do love this re-recording. I must also say that I do love the original version from 1991 as well. They don't differ that much from each other, but they are both great. 9 out of 10. And the second bonus song, Musicians Against the Yuppies. Now this one is apparently quite different from the original version from 1991, which had some keyboard at the beginning. Some of the guitar riffs were differently crafted. I must say that I do enjoy the re-recording from the year 2000 way more because of the quality, the instrumental work which is way more fun, it's faster, it's more straight to the point, it's more evil sounding yet again, I love the keyboard effects, the guitars, just everything, except the vocals, yet again the vocals on the new version are like, eh, they're okay but could have been way better, if this song had better vocals it would have been a masterpiece. But yeah, it's just 9 out of 10. We also have one more bonus song, this one is from the 1996 Japanese edition. It's called TC Psych and it's a live version. I don't know if there's a studio version, I've looked for it and it apparently does not exist. Also there are no lyrics here, it's an instrumental piece. I don't know if it's a cover or an original song because there are no information about this stuff. The only thing I know is that this song is a chill out track, it's just so melodic and so soothing, I actually wish it was on the record because it's just so weird to listen to, I love when sadists create that very magical atmosphere in which you can get lost, it's just so beautiful. This is a great track, 8 out of 10. And the final song is not on this record but I already reviewed the songs from the Black Screams EP, so why not? review the title song from that one as well. Black Screams is a song that wasn't re-recorded for this album for some reason. It also wasn't re-recorded in the year 2000. There are three versions of this song because Black Screams was first a demo, then an 7th inch and then an EP. All of those versions have awful production, they sound like shit, so it's hard to listen to them. But I must say that I do enjoy this song. But I get it, I understand why it wasn't recorded. It's not as magical and interesting as all of the previous songs I've talked about. I do love the bass work on this song, and some of the guitar riffs, the more melodic ones, are just beautiful. But overall, it's just a good song. It's nothing special. Go listen to it on YouTube if you want, but just get ready for bad production and subpar vocals. 7 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable, the flow is fitting, replayability. Yeah, it's an excellent record, I enjoy it from beginning to the end. It could have been better, I would replace some songs like Dreaming Deformities and Musicians Against the Yuppies should have been on the standard edition instead of Nadir and Sadist. I think that would have been more fun, you know. But still, what we've got is amazing. I feel this is one of the most important records in metal music. Like. 1993 was such a good year for metal music. We had Above the Light by Sadist, we had Spheres by Pestilence, Focus by Cynic. It's just such an experimental time and I wish those times were back, you know. I want more experiments with music. This stuff is timeless. Songs like Hell in Myself, Happiness and Sorrow, Breathing Cancer, Sometimes They Come Back, these are classics, like you cannot argue with that. It's a beautiful record, it's not my favorite Sadist album, they have better ones, but this one is still an amazing debut and I recommend it. Celebrate the mercy by spinning this record today, it deserves your love and attention. That's all from me, thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me on my Instagram, link in the description, and I will see you in my other videos, bye!